Let's do this thing. All right, NFL Week 10. We are going through the previews and our spread picks for the biggest games. We're going to try and kind of kind of fly through a little bit. Um, but, you know, obviously some of these we're going to rant a little longer than others. Uh, the Colts at the Titans are the Thursday night football game. And, you know, I... The Colts obviously did not look great last week against the Ravens, and that was a bit of a depleted Ravens defense. I tend to think that uh, now years and years have gone by, and the Colts have had the Titans number forever, but a lot of things have have shifted since then. I think I like the Titans here. It's a pick 'em, but it like that it was uh, it was minus ooh, two. Are you sure? Yeah, it's minus I, two right now. It was minus two earlier. Did it go back up again? No, no. Holy I'm looking. I'm looking at it right now. And dude, I looked at this thing at three forty five. Yeah, and it's gone down that much since. Did the like Titans lose somebody? I mean, I have not seen any news about it, but uh, okay. Hey, you know what? We'll this was a ESPN. gambling pick of mine at Tennessee minus two. I'll take Tennessee at the pick. Yeah, it's uh, it's strange, and I don't know what's happened. Um, but I haven't seen any news come out about it. So, so, so I'm I'm with you on this. Um, this Colts team is not the same. Philip Rivers is nothing to be afraid of. Just just nothing to be afraid of. Yeah, he just I, hasn't been good. He he's not anybody that scares me at all. He hasn't been good. I, I don't trust him to win a game if it's close. I think he's more likely to turn it over than win it. I don't think he's a guy you have to pressure to beat, which is nice because the Titans can't pressure anyone. And, uh, and, and yeah, I, I kind of like the Titans here. Historically, this is why I don't like trends. Historically, the Colts have owned and dominate the Titans. Yep. I, I think Vrabel has this team believing and, and, and seeing different. He's just a different kind of coach, a different kind of guy. Um, I, I think the Colts are a quarterback away from being scary good. And this could be one of the greatest what ifs if they could have this roster that they have built and developed over time with Andrew Luck. Oh, yes, I agree. Yeah, they I, were mean, building I mean, we sport. might be looking hey. back and saying, I mean, Patrick Mahomes might not have a Super Bowl, you know, and this could be the team that everyone thinks is the dynasty coming up. Zamora jumped in and said uh, Hilton is playing, and maybe that's why the line is moving. That, that, I would I imagine. You, Hilton's probably worth two points. Um, I don't know, man. It still doesn't know. scare me. Uh, Antoine, the Titans defense isn't anything to be afraid of, but the Colts offensively just don't look great. If they can't run the ball, they can't win. Yeah. Uh, Hilton's gonna have to have a hell of a game. Casey said. Uh, Casey said he's going Colts. So hey, cheers to it. Hey, look, no. it's a pick 'em for a reason. No, so, I, I mean we could definitely be wrong on this. But uh, Antoine Johnson jumped in. He said, "I'm late. Just got off work. What are y'all thinking about the college games today? Uh, no picks on on these. We're still waiting to to kind of feel some of these teams out. Last night was a perfect indicator that uh, week one didn't really show us much of anything. Like uh, we nope. all thought Miami of Ohio would at least be able to." Uh, to play with Buffalo, and, I mean, that was a disaster. Uh, I Ohio, have, I, I, there's you know. a reason I have a two-week moratorium on all these teams that are coming in late to the party. Yeah, I just don't know who any of them are, and and I can't I can't make a pick or play with one game sample size. If I if I had to bet on a game tonight, if I had to pick one, I would lean Eastern Michigan. Uh, if it's more than a touchdown, I, I they've I've had a ton of people reach out to me today ask about Northern Illinois. And yeah, I tell them all I've the same the thing. Same. Gary hates them. I, I like them more than him, but I have no opinion right now because I need more than one game sample size. They they were so uh, inept last year. Like they were so bad. That coach was so bad last year. Um, but I mean, who knows? Maybe year two is the the right spot for him. But they they didn't look good against Buffalo. Like they had four turnovers in that first game, and I know you can't count on turnovers every game. Um, but I just. But we don't know that. Yeah, we don't we, know that. Yeah, what, if, what if you can? What if they're a team like TCU the last couple of years and they just turn the ball over four times a game? I mean, it's possible. It, yeah. One game sample size, you say, oh, well, you can't count on turnovers. Bullshit. Maybe you can. Maybe by the time the end of the season happens, we look back at Northern Illinois and say, oh, yeah, they turn the ball over all the time. That's a very good point. It's a very good point. But you can't tell after one game. Are we, uh, are we both taking the Titans? Taking the, I guess we are. That's this is a gambling pick of mine. Okay, okay. Uh, Eagles at the Panthers on Sunday. Um, nope, 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 and nope. What did I write down? It's Eagles at the uh, Giants, sir. Who's playing at the Panthers? The uh, the Bucks. That's the one I meant to uh, write down. I just wrote it down wrong. Good gracious! All right, so that's uh, I'm not worried about the Eagles game. Uh, okay. Keep keep that out of here. 
Well, I don't. Right. I don't need to talk about the NFC East anymore. Bucks. Bucks at the Bucks at the Panthers. Then Bucks at the Panthers. Uh, Panthers <laughs> five point underdog at home. Uh, the line opened at seven. It's moved down two points. It has. Is this like it? it what what world am I living in? Like, why are people so quick to jump off this Bucks band? I understand they it, looked bad last week. It's just that's it. That's it. We live in a world where we believe what we saw five minutes ago, and everything else we've seen up to that five minutes is garbage and didn't happen. It was too long ago in the past. It, it, it is our it is our micro machine brains that is just constantly flooded with new information. And and if that information came through. 10 minutes ago, 20 minutes ago, it's it's obsolete. It might as well not have happened. People forget that that game where the Bucks beat the hell out of the Packers, who might be the best team in the NFC. And they might be the best team in the NFC by a lot. Okay? Yeah. And and they beat the hell out of them. We forget all about it because they just had that same curb stomping happen to them. Yes. Yes, you're right. You're I don't right. get it. I don't get it. I think this is ultimate bounce back. Tom Brady is not going to get beat up like this. The, the entire team fell apart last week. The entire team. I think this week they are going to look much, much better. And there's a really good chance the best player for the Panthers isn't going to play. I don't think McCaffrey's going to make oh, it. Oh, he's this not. Game. He, it's already been announced. He's oh, is, he, is he already yeah. officially out? He's I knew officially he was, out. I thought he was questionable. Yep. Um, he, to beat this Bucks team, you have to pressure them up the middle. I don't know if the Panthers have the dudes to do that. I don't think they do. I'm I'm all over the Bucks here. I think this is the I perfect bounce back spot. Um it's a Game divisional game and it's on the road and I get that, but I I do think this Bucks team is just a significantly on, better team. On the road doesn't matter how many times I've been trying to tell you this. I know. Right now currently as we stand, road teams, road teams have a better record and straight yeah. up than they're over 500 than home teams. Straight up, just winning football games. Yeah. Not against the spread, not against nothing. Home field advantage means nothing, sir. Oh, yeah. I've been telling it to you for 10 weeks. You I gotta know. listen. I know. Hey, did you see what Alonzo wrote on, on YouTube? No, what, what's, said, up? What, what's up, Suge Knight and Gary? <laughs> I hey, like man, it. I'm not in the hole. <laughs> they don't let you have nice pictures like this in the hole, do they? Zamora said uh, he likes the Chargers, Bucks, Cincinnati, and the Ravens. Um, he said Giants have been playing pretty well. And then Casey said uh, Bucks and the Eagles. So, oh, and then Zamora asked, do we ever do money line advice? Uh, we we will tell you if we think a team has a chance to win the game uh, when yeah. we do our official I'll picks. You, I'm so. going to tell you this. If I play a dog, I also play the money line. Yep. I'm, I'm just going to tell you, too, too many dogs win straight up. They yep. just do. Yep, you are correct about that. So, um, so moving on to the next game, Broncos at the Raiders. Um, Broncos... Have have become a fourth quarter team for whatever reason. Now it might just be because they are down by so much. But uh, Casey said Eagles is a must win. Um, you know, I mean, eh, I, I, I'm not talking about the NFC East anymore. I'm done. I'm done with that division. Not a boy. I'm done with it. Not so, gonna fight not, you on that at all. No, we're we're not talking about them anymore. So uh, Broncos and the Raiders, though, we will talk about that because I think the Raiders are a pretty damn good football team. They are a good football I, team. I think I I'm gonna roll with the Raiders minus five here. Um, because I think the Broncos have have really pushed themselves hard the last you know two weeks, especially in that fourth quarter to try and get back into ball games. I think it takes a little bit out of you. This seems like the kind of spot, even in a divisional game, where the Raiders can get up and and still like keep their keep their foot on the neck. You know, I, I like the Raiders here. So not a not a gambling pick of mine, but if I have to pick it. I would take the Broncos just because they seem to play field goal games. I I don't I don't think they're going to win this game, but I, I do think the Raiders are that much better than them. It's a divisional game; they play everybody close. I, I just think I would take the points if I had to. I don't like it strong enough to to really make a decision one way or the other. Um, I think this Raiders team is really good. I think the Broncos team is kind of fraudulent. I I just can't. I was skeptical of Drew Lock before the season started. I am. I am more than skeptical now. I just don't believe in He's, this guy. He is uh, 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 Blake Bortles to a T. Like where, yeah, where they man. get down don't, and – Don't give me your garbage time stats, all right? Yeah. Don't give me stats when you're down by three scores, okay? Give me stats when the game is 0-0. How the hell are you doing, all yeah. right? When the game is tied 14-14, how the hell are you doing? That's okay? that's what I, I want to know. I don't care. I don't care when you're down by three scores how the hell you do because the defenses play totally different. You are correct. You are correct. Uh, Chargers at the Dolphins. Uh, Dolphins a two and a half point favorite. 
Line seemed a little short to me. I, I'm obviously going to roll Dolphins here. I thought last week was their week to get got. Tua looked really damn good. This is a a good game to see. You know, you've got your your Tua against Justin Herbert. Who's the better quarterback? Who's whatever? Did you see the Herbert stat for uh, for passes downfield? Like it, it, twenty it, any it, twenty yards in the air. He is yeah. unbelievable, man. He's had like nine completions this year, and it's more than any other. Is it any other rookie or just anybody else? Period. By like by seven passes. I mean, it's pretty crazy. I'm trying to figure out is Joey Bosa going to play or not because that's going to determine a lot. Um, if he's going to be one of the guys out, I, I definitely like the Dolphins. If he's not out and he plays, um, I might I might take the Chargers here uh, just because I wonder how much of the Dolphins are going. Damn man, I just closed out the wrong window. I got too much stuff open. What's that line? What's the Broncos line? Uh, the Broncos the Chargers line. line. Uh, Chargers line Chargers. is two, two and a half. Yeah. So I wonder. I wonder how well the. Uh, the uh, uh, Miami Dolphins are going to play being a favorite. Yeah. Because that's, they've kind of been the ultimate underdog to bet on and play. And and I just wonder, how, how are they going to handle, you know, being the, being the team that's supposed to win now? Um, I, I think there's a little bit of that. If Bosa plays, I definitely, definitely like the Chargers. I, I heard a really good – sports writers sometimes are – I think are, are very lazy. They give very boring, bland picks, things that we all see and we all believe and we all have watched and, and think. Today, I, I heard a sports writer make an analogy to Herbert saying, you know, he looks good. He looks really good. But the problem is this isn't baseball, okay? You, you can't win the Cy Young having a 1.3 ERA, but, you know, going 10 and 9 in your win-loss record. In the NFL, in football, Wins matter more than stats. They just do. And Herbert is your ultimate, you know, cybernet analytic baseball stat guy. His numbers look unbelievable. He looks outstanding. Now, he's not the reason they're losing games. But at some point in time, you got to look at him and say, man, this team is too talented to lose ball games the way you are losing them. Yes. We have to figure something else out, you know, it's it's really hard when you're looking at Tua and and Burrow and Herbert and how are we judging these three quarterbacks that are the three big rookies coming into this league this year because they're all on three completely different teams. Tua's on a team that it has a absolute defensive monster juggernaut. Okay, defensively they're the they're the best coach team of the three and it ain't close. They have the best defense and, and it ain't close and they probably have the best offensive line and it ain't close. Okay. Burrow has has the worst of of everything. Well, I he's, think I think Burrow's got. Uh, I think he's got the best receiving core. I really oh, do. No, like, no, I, no, I think no. he Ke- does. Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, uh, Hunter Hunter Henry. No, that's just I, wrong. Okay, that's wrong. You can that's say flat that. Out wrong. But I just don't know how often those guys are all together. And no, but they're all together all the time this whole year. They haven't missed at all. So okay. that's 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 fine. No, no, no. we we disagree there. AJ Green ain't close to what he used to be. All mm-hmm. right, Boyd is good. Higgins is good, but he's a rookie. That's that's the list of what he's got that he can depend on and lean on. But no, no, no. no. Okay. Herbert's okay. Herbert's got the best talent around him, and it ain't close from a skills players. Got the worst line, not the worst line, the second worst line. It's just trying to figure out how do you judge these teams. Yeah. You know, how do you judge these individuals who are playing on different style teams? I kind of think the Chargers had a fighting chance to be in the playoff race, considering seven, maybe eight teams are going to make the playoffs. And they're not close. They're, they're not done. They're, they're done. They're out of this thing. They've lost oh, yes. way too many games already. They, they can't even be considered. And and it's just how much of this is on him? How much of this is if he was really a good quarterback, could he have pulled some of these big wins out? That, that's that's the question. Now, a lot of it's been on the defense. But, Agreed. Agreed. But at the same time, at some point, you got to be able to put up enough points. When you've got a 17-point like, lead on somebody with four minutes left to go, if you get a couple of first downs, it's the ball game. So, so it's not just on the defense who shit that lead away. A lot of it's on you if you could have got some first downs. Now I know because you got the lead, coaches might be running the ball more, so they're, not, they're taking it out of your hands, not on you. It, it, it's just – it's a conversation I think worth having because I like the kid. I think he's really good. I'm trying to figure out – I'm trying to remove the fantasy football aspect. 
How how good are you? Because this team is not bad. Agreed. And y'all are not winning games. And I think with that kind of talent, y'all should be winning games. Uh, Joey Bosa, by the way, did not practice at all last week after suffering a concussion. Didn't play. Well, against I know the last Raiders. week he didn't. Uh, he didn't play. But he's moving towards a return to the Chargers lineup in Week Ten. Chargers I know right Anthony. now what I've seen is he's got limited practice. Anthony but Lynn that's said part on, of their protocol of getting them back from concussion. Lynn said today that Bosa will take part in individual work as the team begins on-field preparations to face the Dolphins. He remains in the uh, concussion protocol, but will progress towards clearance if the return to work doesn't result in any complications. Good. So that's what we're looking at right if, now. If he if he plays, I kind of like the Chargers. I really do. I, th- I, th- I think at some point in time they're going to win one of these close games, and, and I— Two is going to have to get the ball out of his hands quick because if, you know, Bosa's, Bosa's a monster. If Ingram's playing, Ingram's a monster. I mean, those, oh, yeah. those are two best edge rushers in the game playing on one team. No, oh, yeah, I think you're uh, I think you're right about that. Um, the team that the Dolphins played last week, the Cardinals, a two-point home favorite over the Bills. Uh, Bills got a massive, massive win over the Seahawks last week. I think they'll be able to do the same thing against the Cardinals that they did against the um I against the Seahawks last week. I, I, I just, do too, Gary. I think this Bills team is really, really damn good. And Stephon Diggs, even if he's not like your, your leading stat guy, he is still a difference maker in that people have to worry about him at all times. Yep. So I'm, I'm rolling Bills here. I, uh, it, I'm so off of that Cardinals team after last week. And I know that it was a close game, and I get it. But, man, like I, I think there are ways to beat the Cardinals, and I think the Bills have every one of them at their disposal. Yeah, I do too. I think this has potential to be the most exciting game of the weekend. I think this oh, is going to be yes. the best game of the weekend, and it ain't close. Isn't it, it, is it not weird that the Bills were like we we love the Bills because of their um, because of their defense for so long, and it ain't been defense this year. No, it's it's strange. It's just real strange. But I think this is going to be an exciting, high scoring game. I I agree. This is what what is the over in this game? Do you know? Yep, hang on, I got to pull it up right now. 56, 56 and a half across I'd the board. Be, I would go over that. Yeah, I would too. I mean, I would I would, I would certainly go this over line, that. This line, this spread line is all over the place. You can get it from two and a half to two to one. Yeah. It's, I it's, mean, it's, there's, it's, it, there's a, if you shop it, depending on how you like it, I mean, you can get a point and a half. And this ain't college football, man. A point and a half is a big deal in the NFL. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Now, I put it for two for, for our thing, but I, that's fine. I just think the Bills win. I think they went out right. I think I think they came. I think the team with the, here's the problem. Team with the ball went last is going to win this game. Yeah, you're probably right about that. Probably right about that. Uh, moving on from there, let's stay in the NF, uh, NFC West. We got the Seahawks going to the Rams, and the Rams are a one and a half point favorite. I um, I think this is bounce back spot. This is bounce back city for Russell Wilson in that bunch. I mean he he has not looked good for a couple of weeks now. Um, and it, it's not that he hadn't looked good. Like he's he's had some some turnovers. It, the defense obviously has not looked great. Um, I think this is just a really good spot for them to go and get a W. Like I know that the Rams have played well. I get all that, but I don't care. I think this is one of those where the Seahawks feel like this is must win, and I think they go get it done. I'm I'm all over the Seahawks this week. Me too. This is actually a gambling pick of mine. I like the Seahawks to bounce back. Um, I I think they're the better team. And uh, the Rams don't have the the offensive firepower, I think, to do what the Bills did to them. And I think to beat Seattle, you're going to have to score. Yes. And and I don't think the Rams can do that. I don't think that – I think they will score. They're not going to shut them down. The Seahawks defense isn't shutting anybody down. They won't score enough. They won't score as often. That's the problem. Yep. I, I tend to agree with you. I tend to agree with you. Uh, 49ers at the Saints. Uh, this line has gone uh, bananas. I mean, just absolutely bananas. Uh, it opened at what seven? Is that right? Yep. yep. Opened at seven. It's up to nine, ten in some spots, nine and a half. Um, because it's it's all over the board between ten and nine. I've got it at nine and a half for us. Um, I the Saints after just a demolition of the Bucks. I wonder how much they are up for this game. Like, I, I know that they had a massive, you know, it, it was a two-point loss to the 49ers at home last year, 48-46. Like, that that kind of felt like game of the year type of stuff last year. But I I kind of lean San Francisco, even with all the injuries, even with all that mess. San Francisco got blasted by the Packers, and then the Saints go out and they blast the Bucks. 
and I kind of feel like it comes back towards the middle. Like there, there had to be a reason why this was a seven point line. Like I could see the Saints winning by a touchdown and, and never really feeling threatened. Yeah, I I think I'm with you. I I feel like if you take the Saints and you lose, you, you know, you think, oh well, I bet on the better team and I and I and I lost. It happens. You know, it's gambling. Yeah. If you take the 49ers and you lose, you just feel like what an idiot. I should have known better. Like this team's that's, that's how we way felt worse. last week. <laughs> but the problem, is, yeah, no, same thing. But the problem is, I I kind of still like the San Francisco. I just yeah. I, I know they don't have the talent on the field. I know they don't. But but I just feel like, man, at some point in time, they'll be able to scheme stuff up. It's the NFL. Teams have been yo-yos all year long. I mean, it's only fitting that the Saints come off of Molly Whopping that they put on the Bucks, and 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 turn around and kind of lay an egg, and you know maybe scrape by, and then also you know the 49ers getting destroyed the way they did, showing up and and threatening to beat somebody that they have no business being in the game with. Yes, you know. Yes, I mean that that's that's the NFL. 2020 all day long. I mean, it's Steelers Cowboys. It's, you know, it's all yes. that. So, uh, but Casey jumped in. He said, he said, Saints uh, cover, and he misspelled it. And then he said, Kobe. And then he came back in and he said, Saints cover. So, yeah. hey, they, they very well could. They could be hitting their stride no, right no. now. No doubt. But I, I do feel like that might just be a few too many points. Yeah. And, and I'm going to roll with the 49ers. And well, some, I'll, I'll roll with the house because right now it's 90-something percent, and in the NFL you just don't have 90% of action go one way ever. Yep. Um, and and I'll, I'll, roll, I'll roll with the house. I like your thinking. Uh, next up, I've got the Bengals at the Steelers. Steelers minus eight. Now, uh, let's see. Just so we're clear, that means you owe someone. Uh, he said 81 million on IR for the Niners. Crazy. <laughs> like... Yes, it's it's pretty insane. Um, it's it's definitely nuts. I mean, I I'm not, you know, I understand all the injuries. I get all that, but also know that all these guys that are still playing for them are professionals. Like they were all good enough to make the NFL. So they're barely, they're barely professionals. Listen, it, this is one of those things where if you take the Saints, you feel better about yourself. If you lose, if you if you you know if you bet the the 49ers, you feel like a moron. So just yeah, do what you want to do. Um, the, the the information and advice is free. <laughs> Ryan, Ryan Kennedy jumps in. He said, Pitt, Cincy, over. Uh, the total is 47, 47 yep. and a half there. You can find a 46 and a half out there if you want to. Um, I There's 88% of the tickets on the Bengals. Uh, it's gone from 11 and a half opening down to 8, 7, 7 and a half. Uh, I had it at 8 on here, but I think we'll do 7 and a half because it just keeps moving down. And... I gotta hey, tell whoa, you, whoa, whoa. there's not a single seven and a half on the board, and you're just gonna do it because the line's moving that way. No, 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 no. There's uh, bet on line is seven and a half. Uh, GT bet seven and a oh, half. Okay, Air all right, it, it's moved. Half. It's moved. Okay, seven and a half is fine. Yeah, seven and a half is fine. It was it's almost it, all eight across the board when I paid this pick about three and a half hours. That's ago. That's exactly what I did. But Two it's and a half moving to three thirty, whatever time that was. That, that's at, okay. That's that's one of my gambling picks. So okay. was I was rolling with the Bengals because the Steelers don't beat anybody. By by more than a touchdown, really, it feels like. So, uh, Zamora said, when you guys bet, do you guys bet parlays? Do you do less cash, more team parlay, or less team parlay and more cash? Uh, I tend not to do parlays in the NFL because you are going to lose uh, more more times than not. Like, it, I, don't, so, I don't feel as good about any of the NFL stuff because anything can happen, like, any given week. So, I just, I tend not to bet parlays if I do anything. Um, sometimes I will do, like, teasers. Maybe, but but typically in the NFL, man, I'm just making straight picks. Like, that's it. I, I will I will tell a story. I had somebody ask me on Twitter today how I felt about parlays and stuff. I, I, so I play them because I think they're fun. Okay, but it, it's it, fun. It, it, do you still do uh, money line round robins? No, I haven't done that in a long time. Which yeah. I would have made a lot of money the last er, couple of weeks. If early I had. early in the season, they they but, pay yeah. out better. But anyway, neither here nor there. I I bet a lot of things because I think it's fun. Okay. I think betting is a very personal thing. Do whatever you want that you think is fun. But now if you're actually trying to make money, if you're trying to do this and, and capitalize on your winnings, I, I would, t- so I have family members. Okay. A family member that was in the, in the betting game, who was a bookie. All right. This was way back in the day, long, long, long time ago before I was born. Okay. And, and, and he told me a story when I first started betting, 
you know, I was asking his opinion about a parlay and he, he said, I'm going to tell you a story about parlays. He said, I once had a phone call at two in the morning on a Friday night, Saturday morning of a guy calling to make a bet. And I answered the phone and I proceeded to cuss him out for calling me so damn early when he could call me tomorrow and make this damn pick. Cause you know, the line ain't moving between now and then, because back then you didn't have 24 hour gambling. You didn't have the internet where you could just bet on all this stuff. He, had to wait until you book you woke up. Yep. All right. And and the guy said, Oh, I'm sorry. He said, I just had a couple of parlays I wanted to play and I wanted to get them in before I went to bed and passed out. Could do been drinking all night. And he said, Oh, okay. You want to make some parlays? Let me let me get up and get my pen. Let me get my pen real quick. And he said, I immediately stopped cussing the guy out and I immediately got up, got my pen and paper. I'm I'm telling you, they are they are so much in the favor of the house. It's oh, yeah, not even sucker funny. bets. He his response to me after that, pretty crash, okay, pretty pretty rough story, but Chris, I'd get out of some good pussy to write a parlay bet if I had to. <laughs> it's the truth. It's a hundred percent. Well, because the the payout odds are so much less than what the odds of actually hitting it are. Yeah. Right, like it, getting just, getting those games exactly house, right. They're just a big house edge. They just they yeah. just are. They're a big house edge, and that's fine. If you like to play, I still play them, and I think they're fun. Yes. I only like to. I basically try to pair up two or three teams that I like, and 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 I, I'll never do more than a three team parlay ever in my life. I just won't. It, it'll either be a two or a three teamer, and, and and that's it. But I, I'm just telling you. If you want to try to do this for a living and make cash, which I don't do, so take that for whatever it's worth, then then you you might want to walk away from the parlays or ease up on them. You want to do them for fun? Do whatever the hell you want. It's fun. So yeah. that's uh, Kay- my advice Casey, on parlays. Casey jumps in with a valid point. He said bookies love parlays, but they get cracked sometimes. A hundred percent. You're going to hit oh, no, them every now It's not that you can never hit them. It's just anything you do over and over and over again, you're eventually going to lose. The, I mean, the hitting when them, I roll dice, you know, I bet the hard ways because yeah. they're fun. But but the odds are the fact that they're not going to hit. Yeah. Casey said, if you're going to do parlays, do money line and either uh, either do five or six favorites or two underdogs. I'll do never not play do the, the favorites ever in a pro football. Never, yeah. ever bet money line parlays favorites because you, do, you can't bet enough of them to make the money worth it. Favorites yep. get busted in the NFL all day long. Now, you can do whatever you want. I am never going to bet that much chalk. I feel sick even talking about it. Yeah, I, I'm with you. I'm Boring. with you. It's, it feels weird. Uh, so we, we haven't even talked about this Bengals-Steelers game. <laughs> Let's um, get into it. So Burrow is a covering machine. Yep. The Steelers, you know, it, big come from behind win against the Cowboys last week. Uh, it just would have been completely embarrassing, and it was kind of embarrassing anyway. Um, they should you, be embarrassed. You You've got... You know, what, what, what's our look-ahead spots here? Uh, the Bengals have nothing to look ahead to. No. Uh, who who do the Steelers have next week? Um, Nobody either. So, no. well, this, I mean, they got the Jags next week. All right, so we, we don't have a look-ahead spot. All right, so in this spot, though, I just don't think that the Steelers ever beat anybody by more than a touchdown. Like, at five one-possession games this year, um, I, I'm going to roll Cincinnati because I think that they can keep this thing at least relatively close. And I'm not going to touch the over because I, I do still like the Steelers' defense. So, I, I don't – like, I do trust Joe Burrow to be able to score points. But how many points is the question? Like, I think he scores enough to keep it within, you know, eight. But I don't know, man. Uh, I'm, I'm rolling I'm rolling Bengals here. Yeah, I'm rolling Bengals too. I, I, I'm, I'm going to tell you this. Nobody goes undefeated in the NFL. Okay? Yep. Nobody. Nobody goes undefeated in the NFL. It just don't happen. Early in the year, everyone was telling me how the Chiefs were going to go undefeated. And I literally said, they're not just going to lose. They're going to lose to a team they're big favorites in because they're going to be big favorites against a lot of people, and somebody's going to jump up and bite them. Yeah. Okay? I mean, it, it could have happened to them last week. They, they were a, they were a double-digit favorite against the Raiders, and the Raiders jumped up and bite, bit their ass, and nobody would have picked that. No, it's right. same, same thing last week. The Panthers were 10.5-point underdogs. That's right. 10.5-point, double digit again, and they almost yep. got their ass picked again. This is going to happen. The The Steelers were 14.5-point favorite against the Cowboys, and and they had to have everybody in the league throwing flags at them to get them to the end zone. <laughs> they could not score on the worst defense in the NFL. Yep. yep. Okay? 
I'm just telling you, this Bengals defense is not good, but I, I, I think they're better than the Cowboys. And if you can't score without help against the Cowboys, you're going to have a hard time scoring against this Bengals defense. So I, I might would recommend this, by the way, on this. Um, I think that if you wait around a little bit and you wait for Big Ben to get off of the, the COVID reserve list, I think this line goes back up. So I think if you want to take the Bengals, you can get even more point value because I think that's the reason that this thing is going down right now is because of the COVID-19 reserve list. So uh, Zamora said, wondering if Big Ben is 100 or not, 100% or not. Um, I mean, who knows? Well, no, he's not like, going to be 100%. Like, Whatever I, I happened to his knee, yeah. happened to his knee, and it's real, and it's not going away. Yeah, I, I, I just, like, I'm all over the Bengals here. Like, this is the I, perfect spot. I'm going to tell you this. I'm trying to find the line. I can't even find the damn line. Which line? The money line. Um, good question. So, money line for... Got it. You got it? Go ahead. Nope, I don't have it. Shit, why are they not giving me the money line? Hold on. Pittsburgh and Seattle, uh, plus 280, plus 290, plus 274, the Bengals? Yep. So That's it. Yep. That I'm going to tell you this. I will, I will have money on this money line for the Bengals. At some point in time, the Steelers are going to lose a game, and they're going to drop it to somebody that we're not expecting them to drop one to. They just are. Yeah. And 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 if I think it's either going to be one of the next two games because that's just kind of how the thing lays out, I would I would think it's the, the the Bengals over the Jags. It's a divisional game; they know each other well enough. That that's just part of it. Yeah. So I'm I'm just I'm just telling you, nobody goes undefeated in the NFL. The Steelers' schedule is pretty easy for the next eight games that they have to play. I'm I would bet that they're more up to lose four of them than to win six of them, and they'll be favored in all of them. Yes, so, they've got they'll the be favored all of them. I think they may have the cheat. No, I don't think they play the Chiefs. They'll be favored in all eight games that they have remaining on their schedule. I, I think they will lose half of those and more than they will win six of them. I don't I don't know if they're I mean, we'll we'll see. If they if they have not lost by the time they get to Buffalo here in about uh let's see, five weeks. Um mm. You know, then I, I if they haven't lost, they might be favorites there. But I, no, I get the if they haven't lost, they'll be favorites. Yeah, they'll be favorites because but, the betting market will demand it. But if they have lost a game, uh, whether it's to the Ravens in three weeks or you know whatever, uh, I would imagine that the Bills will be favored in that spot. No, because Bills we don't will be know home. that the Bills won't won't have two or three losses by then between now and then. Uh, you got a you got a valid. The point Bills there. lose two more games between that game. We they won't be. You're assuming they're going to run the table. Uh, that's okay. That's true. That's true. Uh, Casey said, "Hell no." Uh, the Steelers lose to either the Ravens or the Browns. The Steelers aren't losing to the Browns because they can stop the run. If you stop the run, you can stop the Browns completely. The the Browns have no second option outside of running the football. And in today's football, you can't just be one dimensional running the ball. You can be one dimensional throwing the ball. I saw nine teams win football games Sunday that had less than a hundred yards rushing. Okay. Some of them have less than 50 yards rushing. Never seen that before in my life, but all of them could throw the ball. You, you just can't be built the way the Browns are built right now and win football games. They don't have a quarterback that can lead them in Baker Mayfield. Let's, uh, let's move into the Sunday night game. Come on. Ravens at the Patriots. Seven and a half is the line right now. Um, in, in favor of the Ravens, of course, I, I don't know what to make of this. I, I, the Patriots have just looked like complete and total garbage. They were right there with the Bills, right there with them a couple of weeks ago. They look like hot garbage against the Jets. Is that just because it was the Jets and they just didn't care? Uh, hey, this thing is down to seven again. Yep. At most spots, so that's gone down a little bit since I last looked at it. Uh, so we'll we'll just say seven then. We'll say we'll say Pats plus seven. Um, I, I think. That I think teams with good defenses understand how to stop Lamar Jackson. Right now, the Ravens have caught on to this because uh, Pro Football Talk, uh, no, 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 ESPN brought this up, uh, and it may have been from somewhere else. But uh, but Lamar said today that defenses have been calling out the Ravens' offensive plays, like they know exactly what they are going to run before they even run them. Um, I do wonder, yeah, Lamar Jackson said the Ravens are too predictable on offense. So do they fix that? That was from the Rich Eisen show today. Are they able to fix that? Or do they just have to keep rolling with what they got 
for now. And if that happens, if the Patriots know exactly what the Ravens are going to do, are they good enough to slow down this Ravens offense and keep it within a touchdown? Gary, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because the Patriots can't score. All right, so we're. I, I was going to roll Ravens just because I think that they are just the significantly Let's, better. If the team. Ravens get twelve points, they're going to win this thing by twelve. Here's the issue that I've got: if they get four field goals, they're going to win by twelve. Uh, McKinnon said the base of football is still run the ball, stop the run. However, I truly believe by the time my son's old enough to be playing football, high school. Uh, end up will be pass the ball, stop the pass, with running and run defense being in addition to the game, not the base. You you didn't yes. you didn't watch football Sunday then? Yes, it's it is all hundred percent passing. Team, but the Vikings ran the ball. I I'm gonna roll Ravens, uh, and I I feel dirty about it because ninety seven percent of the bets are on the Ravens. Yep, I know it, it looks and and the lines going down, which is weird. But I'm just I. I would love to believe that Bill Belichick is magic, but he's not. He's just a dude. Okay. He's just a man. He's really smart, but he doesn't have any talent. They just, they're, they're inept at talent at so many positions. If they are going to score and keep it close with the Ravens, even if they shut Lamar down, they turn the football over to one of the teams that gets more turnovers than any team in the league, the Ravens, Lamar doesn't have to be that good. If he yeah. gets one touchdown and they get in field goal range three times, this thing is over. They couldn't score against the Jets. What on they top could of, not score. Well, I mean, they put up 30, you know. like a, That's still a pretty sizable number of points, but it, that you're not going to be able to do that against the Ravens. Like Especially uh, Zamora brings up Marlon Humphrey coming back. Yeah, we saw that news uh, from jo- earlier jo- today. Joe Flacco throwing dimes against this team to dudes that are not dudes. I, I just don't know what to do. I, you know, I love the Pats. Terry, not going to change that, but they're not good. Terry said, "What about your boy Cam? He's talent. <laughs> he's not. He's not talent. He's not he's, good. He's, he's just not so, good. He's he's worth every bit of the million dollars he's being paid. Yeah, that's that's about it. People people thought we stole him. No, no, we didn't. No, we didn't. We we paid market value for a quarterback. He's the cheapest quarterback in the league right now. That's starting." And and we're, we we have the the worst quarterback in the league. McKinnon said, "I still think every team wants to run the ball this year, but with so many linemen and running backs out this year, I can't see it yet." Uh, no, no. That's Outside just, of the Vikings and the Browns, nobody else wants you, to run it. You have to be able to throw the football if, the game if you want to be able to win. Like that's just the, the way Browns it goes. are a great example of that. The Vikings are a great example of that. You put the quarter the, the ball in both those quarterbacks' hands, and they lose. You shut down the run, they lose a hundred percent of the time. Yes, yes. Hey, that, that, this is a good time for us to get into Monday Night Football. Uh, you're, you're taking Ravens, right? Yes. All right. Vikings at the Bears. Bears are a two and a half point underdog. They have lost uh, several straight. Not looking good so far. Uh, had to fight and claw just to get back within seven of the Titans last week. Uh, but the Titans dominated that football game. Just dominated. Um, I will tell you this. I'm siding with the Bears this week. I This is a team that can stop the run. Yep. And I don't trust the Vikings to be able to throw the football. No, I completely agree with that. I just completely agree with that. The, they're, the Bears are going to say, Kurt beat us. Beat us because they do have a defense well enough to slow down Cook. Yeah, beat us. Yep, and that's I, and I don't think that they can. I don't think Kirk Cousins can do it. So. No, no, no. Put the ball in his hand. No, no, sir. Yep, you are not going to do it. Um, 